take a moment to close your eyes. When in your life were you afraid from the judgment of others and that it prevented you from doing something you wanted to do? Where would you be now if you resisted that fear? I am Naomi McGregor, first class Masters of Engineering scholar, founder of a multi-award winning tech company. At 18, when I got into university, I raced down the hallway to my mum. I got into Queen's. Then the excitement started to wear off. I had no idea why I chose to study economics. I wasn't even excited. My family and friends expected me to study a business-related degree. Yet, I was pretty sure there was something missing. Growing up, I was very creative. I loved crafts, ballet, and even maths. My technology teachers recommended I study engineering. Coming from an all-girls school, this seemed a little odd to me. Will I go from an all-girls school and be able to keep up in a male-dominated program? The fear of judgment and fear of failure meant I was terrified to push beyond the boundaries. I was afraid I would go to university, fail, and come back to my hometown with my false hopes. And due to these fears, I almost didn't pursue engineering. Since taking on the journey of self-belief, a lot has changed. I, whenever I then spoke to my mom and she realized that I wasn't excited for university, we changed my degree that day to engineering. We frequently hear that there are a lot of jobs for women in STEM, scholarships for women in STEM, demand for women in STEM, Yet what we don't hear is how overwhelming the judgment women in STEM can face. At 21, in work, I frequently felt the need to prove myself as a female engineer. I had to be creative, yet not disruptive, to be stern, yet kind, to be assertive, yet not show emotion, and with this mixture of needs to fulfill, I was then told, women shouldn't be engineers. I had to bite my lip and walk away. I was heartbroken that still my gender would define my job role. Thankfully, I grew up with rather strong female influences in my life. I watched them face discrimination daily. I saw them reaffirm their belief in themselves and follow their passion against all odds. It may come to your surprise that one in every two girls between the age of 11 to 14 years old consider a career in engineering. Fast forward to 16 to 18, the numbers drop to one in every four. Yet, these are pretty good ratios still. In industry, females only represent 11% of engineers. So what's holding us back? I believe the fear of failure and the lack of diverse role models acts as the two main reasons to the lack of diversity within STEM. Although the problem isn't STEM. The problem is our lack of belief in ourselves, our fear of judgment, and judgment within society. How many groundbreaking technological changes have we resisted from occurring due to our judgment? 
Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For every action or experience we face in our lives, we learn something and our, the people around us have an impact. We must str seek strong influences in our life that push us forward. And we must seek to do the same for others. Growing up, I loved ballet. I started dancing at four and assistant teaching at 13. Ballet was a major influence in my life. It taught me how to be creative, how to work in a team, how to stand on a stage. Most importantly, ballet taught me resilience and grit, that nothing is perfect, that hard work and repetition is the only way to succeed that failure is only temporary. Ballet taught me some of the most fundamental attributes to succeed. We are the experiences that we face and how we react to these experiences. At this stage, you potentially think that university was an easy ride for me. And I'm here to tell you that it absolutely was not. Being one of the few females, I felt I stood out already. So asking questions, probably not. Why set myself up for further judgment? I frequently questioned the judgment I would face from the actions I took. My motivation dropped my grades dropped, my self-belief dropped. That is the truth of self-belief. It is a continuous journey. Midway through university, I started realizing that when I was truly myself, that's when I seen the best results. I applied to a scholarship and I wrote it the way an engineer should write it. And I didn't get it. I applied again the following year, and I wrote it how I would write it. I went to the interview, and I was my most authentic self. And I became the Royal Academy of Engineers Leaders Scholar. This was the moment that I realized that when I was my most authentic self, I could do it. Whenever we are authentic, people take our dreams and our passion seriously. Choosing to believe in ourselves has to be an active decision. It is easy to do on our best days, and most fundamental to do on our worst. I call myself a girly girl engineer. I used to believe this was a negative that should be hidden. Then I started to realize that when I was authentic, it worked. We have to be ourselves, be unique, and embrace what makes us, us. I'm going to leave you with one final story. Two years ago, at a STEM ambassador event, I was in a room filled with over 100 children, aged 10 to 11 years old. I watched them build shelters out of paper. None of these shelters out of 15 groups looked the same. Some designs were wonderfully crafted with every fold identical to the other. Other designs were wild and chaotic. But none of these designs were afraid of judgment because they were all unique. Then it was my turn to stand up and talk. 
I asked if they could guess what I was studying. Art, business, teaching. Pop star was by far my favorite answer. To their surprise, I said engineering. I then proceeded to ask, how many of you want to be an engineer? Three. Three children put up their hand. I continued and told them my story, my journey through engineering. At the end of my story, I asked, how many of you want to be an engineer? Seventy girls and boys put up their hand. By showing these children the potential to, that STEM holds, it showed them endless opportunity. Looking back, I find myself agreeing. Women shouldn't be engineers, because there is no such thing as just an engineer. There is no box or stereotype that confines the creative capabilities of STEM. There, the mathematician can be a baker. The artist can be a scientist. And this ballerina can be an engineer. It is not one or the other, but a beautiful combination of both. Your journey can lead to failure, and you may have to repeat it multiple times before you succeed. But be resilient. Highlight your uniqueness. You will only regret the things you do not do. So I challenge you. Next time you go to do something, but fear the possible judgment, do it anyway. Thank you.